What's up guys? Matt here playing Blaster Master for the NES. We are on the second dungeon and we are making our way to the second boss. Which uh, is still relatively easy in the scope of the entire game. Um, you'll notice I'll kill these uh, rocks here because sometimes you can get health and you can get a gun power up. Um, speaking of uh, on the gun power-up front. Right now you'll notice I have one gun power-up and one full power. If you take a hit of damage, like I just did there, you lose your gun power-up. Uh, you also lose health too as well. But you'll have to learn how to and where to find the gun power-up so you can, you can keep them having full health because they are far and in between. Um, these guys, I don't know what you would call them. They're kind of like those, uh... Ages from Zelda. You just, uh, I just run away from them. There's only one that I kill in this entire section. But uh, in the description, I think I'm gonna put a link to the images that I used to help me learn this game uh, because I didn't know them. I didn't know the game by uh, heart from playing as a kid or from anything else. I had to learn it, relearn where uh, how to play the game as an adult, so I could um, beat it. I think through this next room leads us to the first boss, and, um, or I'm sorry, the second boss, the second dungeon boss, and he gives us Crusher, I think, is our, uh, tank, tank power. -up. This is where we come into the first instance of, uh, glitching. So, the bombs, if you hit, look up, if you hit the bombs on his weak spot and pause the game, like I just did here, like his mouth, right where his mouth is, is where the weak spot is, you can, uh, between the two pinchers, you can uh, basically cheat the game and get uh, a free kill on the boss. And there's, there's two, four, six, and seven, I think, are the bosses that you're able to do that on. So I will be doing that. I wouldn't call it a glitch, but everybody uses it. Um, so now we have to backtrack a little. Now, Crusher lets you punch through walls, even which you can't get through normally. What a world tree is. Be there a minute. I'll show you. Um, so normal peas give you one health. Uh, light and uh, lit up peas give you um, four health. And the same thing with light up power ups. I think they give you like double the amount of uh, or I'm sorry, lit up hovers give you full hover. I think you get the lit up gun power ups. The hovers are the ones uh. The little hovers will give you four hovers on your bar. And that brings us to the um, hover power up, which is um, which is unique to this game. We don't have it now. I think it's like the fourth or fifth power up. Uh, but it is a um, really cool feature that I don't know. It just makes the game connect. It like connects all the missing pieces. You got a tank. You got a guy. And then you've got flying. <laughs> so this first, uh, this next section is through this little wall here that you can't get through unless you have the crusher. I'm sorry, not there. It's down. That's the way back. But it's down one more. Pretty sure. I've already beaten this. This is a pre-recording me beating this. Spoilers. Sorry. But, uh... This is area three, and we're gonna get the hover power up here. This area can be difficult, but if you learn the tips to beating it, uh, you, you can make it through. Like, the tip for this room is to take the bottom and just spam the gun. Get through it every time without taking any damage. Here, you have to wait for those guys to fall off. Uh, you can, some can try to kill this guy with lightning if you want. I just run past him here. I take the, the damage if they even get one on me. I usually don't. This room, there's no rhyme or reason to how to do it. Just go down in this bottom right corner. Uh, this room, what you can do is jump here and kill this guy. You time your missiles right, so that gets rid of that guy here. You can jump prior. You don't even need the uh, missiles, but here I just take a hit. I don't know how to kill that guy. Here you jump up. You jump up and you wait for this guy or you run past him. There'll be another one spawning right above him, so you have to be prepared for that. I kind of do it like that. I kind of like aggro him over into the corner and then run away. Now this room can be tricky. So you come to the corner, 
shoot twice, shoot twice or three times again, and then you probably will kill him. If you don't kill him, you have to just try to avoid his bombs, because the bombs from those guys are actually what do the most damage. They do like two or three hits of damage. So that one I can never dodge, kill him in time, so I just dodge and, and just keep shooting. Uh, miss this jump. I'll show you what not to do. Also, I just wanted to mention that some of the sound effects from this game might have been um, reused from Fester's Quest. You can kind of tell, because in my old playthrough of that game, I did know I did play that game a lot when I was a kid, Fester's Quest. And when I never beat it as a kid, I did play it a lot. And I did recognize the gun power-up, I mean, the, the fully upgraded gun in this game sounds just like the fully upgraded gun in the other game. kind of like a, something you'd have to know from playing it. It's just weird. So here you jump on top of the door, you like that. There's always a guy up there. And the same thing, there's a guy up here. Jump up and shoot him. And there'll be another guy up here, but you can avoid him if you just go through the room there. This is the most dangerous room in this whole section, I would have to say. And just the trick to this room, to, to not taking that much damage or losing much health, is to take it slow. Um, the slower you go and the more you kill... Uh, the slower you go and the more enemies you kill, the less likely you are to take damage. So, I was worried that that other guy was going to drop one while I was doing that, that's why I wasn't sure. Um, once you get through that little hallway, the rest of the rooms are relatively easy. I'll be coming back to this section later on. The final dungeon is actually in this section of the game. Here, these guys aren't this. This room isn't the same. It's a little bit wider, if you notice. The guys don't aggro when you jump up there, so you can just kind of shoot them from a distance. That's what I've always done. I just avoid that guy. Here, I just I tr sometimes I kill this guy. Sometimes I just avoid him. In general, I just run through these. Uh, they kind of shoot like little red uh, circles at you. I just run through them. Seems to work the best. Right, right up there is where we'll be coming to after we get the hover power. If you actually need the hover to get through there, that'll let us skip some sections of this map so we can get back. I don't have to backtrack as much. See, I never really saw this section of this as that hard. It's actually just kind of like a health farm. You just farm, farm lots of health. Here, you have to do this stupid jump like this. If you jump down there, he'll spawn a guy. You don't want him to do that because it's just those little worm guys are the most annoying guys in the game. I know we should come up with a nickname for those guys. Call them Silverfish. I really do think they look like that. I also wish that if you, you could get hover power-ups before you, like, hover power before you have the actual hover power-up. Because, um, it would make the game go a lot smoother, I think. Because by the time you get the hover, you'll have a whole, whole thing of hover and you'll be ready to just go. You don't have to farm it. I don't know if I left it in. Just seem doing a little bit of farming. There's not very much in this game. Very, you just need to farm uh, health sometimes, and you need to farm hover, and you need to farm. Uh, you need to farm gun power ups. You need to farm gun power ups for the in, in, intersection of the game. So this is dungeon number three, uh, and it's relatively easy. As far as dungeon goes, the hardest of dungeons I think would be like five or six. This one is easy. Um, important thing to realize here is that you're trying to maybe get some gun power ups that you might. If you, if you don't die between now and the next couple of bosses, you can have a better chance of having a, a higher gun for the final boss. If you can beat the whole game on one life, you might want to try to get these gun power ups here. Um, but it's not necessary to beat the uh, boss in here. I used to think it was. Um, it's necessary to have like one gun power up, really, because you need to be able to shoot across the room. But the regular gun can only shoot a short half the room, and then a gun power up can shoot one, can shoot a uh, whole room, two can shoot like a whole room plus a little bit of speed, three gives you like a more speed. So I'm trying to kill these guys in a, in a form to where I can get their 
these are power-ups. So if you kill them over the spikes, they won't, um, you won't be able to get their power-ups. See how I killed that guy over the door? But, um, I think this is kind of pointless here. It's really hard to kill this guy. Uh, I killed him there. See, there's no point in getting this power-up when it's on the, on the spikes. I missed it. See, once you hit the spikes, it's gone. Those two guys are useless. But fortunately, this room is filled with gun power-ups. You can get at least three in this room. What you have to do is just clear this whole section for every block. And they don't respawn after you're dead. Or, I'm sorry, if you leave the room. If you leave the room and come back, they're not here. They only respawn after you die. So you can't farm it up like that. You have to just know where they're at in order to get them. In the final section of the game, um, they have enough to where you can get a full gun power up that, and they actually spawn when you go in and out of the room, which is weird. It doesn't do it here, but it does it in the final section of the game, now that I realize it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm gonna call this boss the microchip, because he kind of looks like a microchip, and he, uh, he's basically a, a little square that multiplies, and the strategy for him here uh, for this boss is to use bombs, actually. I mean, you use your gun too as well, but bombs are the strongest, and uh, if you can just memorize the pattern, see how when you get further gunfire, your gun starts spreading. I always start out with bombs, and I chase around with bombs a lot. And over time, I got really good at dodging the shots, so I think that's why I was able to do it. I just missed that there. Bombs kill him instantly. So he'll divide like this, and then when he divides to a certain point, he'll, he'll open up, uh, he'll stop dividing, he'll come back to just one, and then you have one, and then you can beat him. See how fast bombs work? You just have to be able to dodge his attacks. If those aren't that hard, it's the, it's the triple shot that's really hard to dodge. Ah. Already down to two. Let's see if he's going to split a little bit more. There's like a set amount of splits, but after this, we're going to end this part of the video. I'll just pause it here to rest a little bit. Then moving on to part three next. There we go. There's one health left. We got the hover. Hey guys, take care. We'll see you in the next one.